Welcome to the first episode of the Drunken Brine Wave. Hey. Whoa! Run VC. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Um, thanks for tuning in. It's the first episode, and as planned, um, as beautifully planned by all of us, it's actually the um, the first birthday birthday of Electric House. Yeah. Um, I so liked it when you said birthday. Birthday. Yeah. The first birthday <laughs> for Electric House, and I'll be honest, we didn't actually plan it. Um, no, it was a complete accident. Two days ago, Jamie realised that it was the uh, it was the first birthday, and then we we had to plan to like do something. So we've got a cake that we're not allowed to set the, um, the candles light for because we can't blow them out, Rona. Um, yeah. But we would like to celebrate. So um, if you can do that with us, maybe just wish us a bit of a happy birthday in the, in the comments, please, guys. We're across, we should be across LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, so wherever you're watching, it's good, that, that isn't is it? actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Is that, that is right, Someone, isn't it? Not Instagram. Not Instagram, sorry, not live, Instagram. Just live on Lee's. Can yeah. someone share it from my LinkedIn for me? <laughs> I should have probably prepped that. Well, yeah. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine yeah. If you, uh, you're you not watching on Instagram, but uh, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, Facebook, wish us a bit of a happy birthday, guys. Um, we're going to be checking the comments, getting some questions. Um, if you're not already subscribed to YouTube, please do that. Lee and Adam, that's the channel, because it's just it's Lee and Adam. Yeah. Um, like Ron Seal. Yeah. But without further ado, I'd like to uh, just a bit of a celebration to Electric House. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. I'm going to fire all these off Are in you one go. Oh, oh, oh it's go. in my coffee. Yep. Oh, um, that was yeah. good. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. So, um, so what are we talking about, Lee? What, well, why, why are people why are people uh, tuning in to watch you unable to? I can't even pull a popper. popper. Um, so look, the, the drunken brainwave. The name came from. Um, uh, us being able to create a business off what was a drunken brainwave. Um, we've been operating the business six years now, and we kind of feel like we know a little bit about stuff. Um, and then the stuff we don't know about, we're kind of hoping that people can watch this and help us out with our struggles on a, on a weekly basis. Yeah. Hence, the, hence the live element. We want people to, um, to get involved. So that's why we're doing it like this, I think. Um, Probably one of very few podcasts that actually... Um, we need value from people watching it rather than yeah, yeah. giving value. Yeah, like we're going to try and give some value, but equally, um, you know, we kind of want some back as well, guys, if that's all right. So um, please um, dispel your wisdom on us. And, you know, we wanted to do something different. We were lucky enough to be able to move here in February, and then we had to shut the office down 30 days later. Um, but we wanted to do something different. So whilst it's a little bit dead at the minute, um, Hopefully, in months to come and episodes to come, there'll be a bit more of a buzz. Um, people going around doing their things that they do here, um, and it'd be a you know a bit bit of a different podcast. I think ultimately we're going to try and steal the best bits from all the podcasts we listen to, do a little bit, and um, and tell people about what we're doing on a, on a weekly basis, and and hope that people listen and watch. Yeah, sounds good. I uh, just like to say as well that I'm feeling very very ill today. Um, I think I I ate something. A um, bit dodgy yesterday, and I, I wouldn't have come in today had it not been for this podcast. So I'm probably a, a six six out of ten. Basically, I'm saying, that. like, be grateful that he's here. Be grateful that I'm here. No, um, basically, if anyone's looking and thinking he's not his usual self, that's why. I'm, he's got, he's uh, got the shits, everyone. Like, he's struggling. Oh, wow. All right, I know, yeah. I dropped it in there. You, you were trying to avoid it, weren't you? Yeah, but, that's not that's, uh, that's Facebook content. Really. <laughs> it's not for LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, so what's, what's actually been going on this week, anyway? Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't. I don't know. I've, my my memory is absolutely terrible. Um, been working on some social strategy. Other than that, I can't remember. We've got a lot going on at the minute. We, we've um, we've managed to get ourselves into a position where it might not look at the minute because the office is so dead. But we're actually, you know, employing people, which is which is great. Um, we managed to sort of scave through lockdown, I guess, um, without having to make any redundancies, which I feel really like grateful about uh, and I feel pretty lucky that we didn't have to do that but um, it's kind of causing us I sound like a dickhead now don't I oh, oh we've come on scale from employment people. it's really causing us problems no, it, yeah, but it kind of is like because it, it we can't is. we still can't bring everyone back you've got this there's all this in the news at the minute isn't there about the whole work from home thing 
Um, and we kind of got that, that struggle of some people want to work at home, but the, the function of what we're doing in the business need, means they need to be here. And then some people, to save space, we've got people working from home who, like the commercial guys and the creative guys who don't need to be here, who want to be in. Yeah, yeah. I think that, you know, they're suffering six and a half months sitting in your bedroom at home um, mentally is quite challenging. In a mad year, like we started Electric House and then like we was like, 2020 is going to be our year, it's going to be amazing. And we spent like 12 months trying to get in here. And then 30 days later, we had to shut it down. Now, six, even like six months on, we've got, functionally, we've got, you know, I don't know, what, 40, how many people we got in here, Scott? 40? About 35. Yeah, about 35 people here. So about half, half about the workforce. About half the workforce, yeah. yeah. Um, I think we're identifying problems now as I was trying to get back into the office. So... How do you get all these people back in um, safely? What's everyone else been doing? Put some, yeah, this was the first bit of value. This is why we've got a problem. Can you solve it? Um, what's everyone doing with working from home and then getting people back in the office? So our office isn't set up to have everyone here now from like a social distancing perspective. Um, what are people doing? I think you're, you're getting quotes at the minute. Do you have someone getting coming earlier? Yeah, we had someone coming earlier for screens because we've got every other desk is free. So we can make sure people are the right distance apart. But if we need to bring people in, and by the way, I'm speaking without knowing what the regulations really are. If we, need, <laughs> if, we need to, if we need to bring people in and have them sat next to one another, do we need screens in? And we've had people come in and, and quote for that this morning. But, um, you know, I don't know how much that's going to cost. You still have to, wear your, have to wear your mask if you're at a screen. I, I've, I don't know. should have had HR. Yeah, you should have. Where's, you don't. Hi. Hey. Less than two meters, and you have to wear a mask. So, yeah, but uh, but but if you've got perspex screens in between, you, you you're fine. But I can go to the pub with six people, so I'm all right about it. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's the difficulty, isn't it, with it all? Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, like Lee said, let us know. You know what what sort of difficulties you're having moving. What back is that name with the comments? Let me. Like, look, I bet is there one? Jamie, if there's not one comment, you should have definitely put one in. Yeah. Um, we don't do it for the comments anyway. Well, we kind of do, actually. <laughs> there we go, just some happy birthdays. Love the hats. Love the hats, yeah. there you go. Um, I went with, what colour is this? Yellow. I went with yellow for on the tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went with orange because it's my favourite colour. Yeah, there you go. Um, Jamie, mm -hmm. what, are we, uh, what are we talking about next, mate? What's, uh, I'm, I'm, I've, got, I've got a script here. <laughs> it's not a script, there's just some bullet points on there. Um, but yeah, James, Jamie, come, come into the podcast, hello, my friend. Hello. Like people who, you know, like producers. Producer Jamie. On radio shows, like, yeah. um, often get like pulled in into conversations, things like that. Yes. Yeah. That's why we've got the mic set up. This is why I've got to get a mic up set up. Like proper guests. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> proper guests. Yeah. You know what I mean, though? Oh, yeah, scraping guess. the barrel, aren't they, with Jamie? Yeah, is, but yeah. I've got some comments that I want to quickly read out, if oh, that's yeah, okay. Oh, I have got some here we go. Yeah, I like this. So, I don't know if you're aware or not, but there's not really much structure to this. It's the first one. It's, it's the first bloody one. We wanted to, Lee's done a podcast before, and we wanted to do one together. And, you know, you know this is... Before, it was boring because I wasn't in it. How, it was boring because you weren't in it. It's not the only one. That was scraping how, the barrel. How's your week been? Was that we wanted to make sure we had a guest in every time, and then... Um, you're bound by that then, you're bound by the timing of it, the location of it, like if they cancel or they can't make it, your episode's kind of like fucked. So we wanted to like pull away from that, but then have occasional guests, not producers. You may speak. Producer <laughs> Jamie is speaking, so I just want to give a quick shout out to Sam Heiner, who gives us, he's a great guy, loves the vlogs, uh, watches all the stuff. Shout out to Always Sam. very supportive. Always Sam very supportive. Uh, I really yeah. like Sam. Very nice guy. Yeah. He's all right. He's all right. <laughs> he wishes a happy birthday. Thank you very much. Uh, Sam Fowler from the Go Agency. Yes. Go on, Sam. Sam. Great guy. Sam's another. another... Sam. I love Sam. Yeah. I know all the Sams, yeah. Uh, Martin Hall. He wants to wish many happy guys. Uh, nice hats. And Martin nice Hall, hats. Is a, I'd say he's a super fan. He's always supportive, isn't he? He's always yeah. in the comments section. So. And then Jay, John Stableforth from CFSP. I don't think that's... Uh, but he wishes you a happy birthday as well. He's John. John. That's no nice worries. You. you know what I'd like to do? Can we ring people during this? Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. Because 
Has anyone got Sam Fowler's number? I'd like him to do uh, a 15 second voice there about the guy does. Uh, so he, he, um, he's something to do with talk sport, isn't it? Yeah, he works at talk sport. I see him all the time in, in talk sport. And he's got the, as in like on his Instagram, best radio, um, like builders merchant voiceover voice in the world. Yeah, let's get him on. Sam, like someone. Sam, put your number somewhere or DM Jamie. Or <laughs> yeah, we'll get you on. Jump in the DMs. Sam. Jump in my DMs. You want a 15 second slot? <laughs> Uh, your best builders merchant yeah. uh, promo please. Just for a little bit of variation, because I'm a bit concerned that people will listen to this and think, oh my God, like these Brummie accents are just the worst yeah. and they're going to turn do off. people really hate Brummie accents? Most people outside of Birmingham do, yeah. Oh, thanks, Jamie. No worries. I think uh, second producer Sam is just going to quickly, uh, technical difficulties. Oh, uh, the mic's so gone. The mic is gone. Is the mic gone? Wow. Batteries. Batteries. Sam. I was, I was in filming you guys. <laughs> I'm joking. That's one. That's, I'm joking. I like that. It's, it's Great first, leadership from yeah. Jamie. That's that first, is. first episode. We'll add it to the process. Yes. It's not part of the process. We'll add it to the process. It's a great thing about Electric House. Test and fail. It's fine, um, Jamie. It's fine. Uh, um, so yeah, I'm gonna go now, guys. Enjoy the rest right, of the podcast. In. Cheers, Jamie. Like it's yeah, it's good. it's a little bit. Oh, there's an audience over there. Look. Oh, right. I mean, they, you can't see that, but we've uh, we've accumulated like four I mean, fans. They do work here. Yeah, they're only eating their lunch, like. Yeah, where they eat every day. Oh, Lee's nearly back. If you shout a bit louder, Lee, you'd probably pick you up from my mic. Well done, Sam. Cheers, mate. Good work, Sam. I'll put this in here. Um, that was seamless. It was seamless. What are we talking about next, guys? Um, Jamie. Where's Jamie? Oh. Well, we might as well, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not been put on the script, so I don't yes. know what it is. Or is that part of the... Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. Well, uh, this came from, I, I was going through LinkedIn yesterday and there was a guy who, I can't remember, I should have, we should have a screenshot of it so we could promo him. But he, um, he's a graphic designer, really good personal brand actually, what he does. But he's decided to start doing these things. He goes through the Urban Dictionary and he gets like business buzzwords of, from the Urban Dictionary. And then he designs a logo for that buzzword. Okay. So the one I seen was um, an ask hole which is defined in the Urban Dictionary as someone who consistently asks for advice, but then consistently ignores it. So, you know, like, oh, Jamie? Jamie's like an asshole. No, I'm joking, he's not. But um, so, so we thought, well, actually, I wonder whether there's like something we can do each week where you pull out the best um, Urban Dictionary business buzzword. You've done some stuff on like buzzwords before, haven't you, through LinkedIn? Done, I've covered the office jargon. What was the... Uh, you know, like things like um, getting uh, my ducks in a row. Um, oh, I say that a lot. Yeah, I picked that up off Lee. Uh, in fact, they were all off you. Were they? Yeah, most of them. I think I'm a bit of a dickhead with them, you know. Mm. Without, when I, when uh, I when first it... started and I started hearing these things, I had to like Google what they meant because I'm like, I don't know what that Yeah, but when you first started, you turned up in like a fucking suit. <laughs> I you did. didn't know what was going on. I did turn up in a suit um, and you had to teach me how to do an email. Yeah. But I've come a long way since Ad, well, on, on Ad's first email, um, uh, like on the first week, he uh he got an email from we were working i can't remember what what we were doing i think we were like selling content or something like that and we um uh it was the it was after the first week and it was a monday morning and uh he had this email and this, this i can't remember the lady's name and she said uh hi adam uh how's your weekend been and this and and i'd instead of like thinking that she was being nice he was like What's her fucking game? Why is she asking me my, how my weekend's been? What, what she, what she, what's happened? And I was like, what do you mean? Well, the only emails I got on site were like, uh, basically, like, do this or do fucking that. It's like, the only what's she you, trying to do? Yeah, the only time you'd write an email on site is if you need to cover your ass because something had gone wrong. So it was like, uh, there was a communication there. So when it goes to court, you could then refer back to it. So no one was nice to each other on these emails. I thought she was like trying to trick him into like, I don't know. I didn't get it. D doing something bad. A bit weird. Um, but I do think I'm a bit of a, a dick with those. Uh, when I seen you do that post, when I read through them, you was I was like, like all of those. oh no, yeah. Synergy. Syn no, nah, not synergy so much. You don't use that one. That Probably because it's like a t too much of a classy word Blue for me. sky thinking, you don't use that one either. No. Nah. I'll give you some credit. Yeah. I think the first one was a nod to you. What are what, what the ones that you have on I there? I can't remember. Uh, like I said, I've got a bad memory. Yeah. This this uh, this week's Urban Dictionary Word of the Week 
it's quite like I've seen this word knocking around a lot on TikTok and stuff. Oh my god, it is there. Sorry. I know. It, I, 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 yeah. My apologies, Jamie. It is actually there. Simp. And I, and I, I've seen people use it because I'm so old. I didn't get it. But a simp is someone who does way too much for a person they like. Uh, I don't understand I don't get this the bit. Line. <laughs> so Jamie's wrote, just bear with us. Jamie's wrote, Brian Shoe, the simp. I bought her a car and a whole ass house, right, and we're yeah. not even dating. You Nathan, were, you were simp. the pimp, you were simp. Was this like a little story? Did you? Is this is in the Urban Dictionary? Yeah, not something you've crafted. Um, oh, what did you think a simp was? Have you heard the word? I sound like I, a fucking I, granddad, don't I? No. You, have you heard of simp? I got mad deja vu at the minute. Yeah, you got a few simps who sort of like work for you. You've got you've got a few simps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lee's so got, is Lee's it, got a few. So is it basically like people are in like in the friend zone? They're a wetter. Yeah. I don't get the use of the word. No, like I think the you, ask I think hole. You picked, picked a poor one. There, yeah, to be honest. like ask hole was was like I got it. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, it was the plan words. Yeah. Um, should we move on from James? Who's who's a uh, Urban Dictionary. Yeah, search. yeah. Something I wanted to know about was um, Simply Business, actually. So one of our one of our partners are, like, pushing um, the... Hold on. This, this isn't in the script. Uh, oh, well. The Business Boost. Um, well, the re you know what I'm doing? This is a shameless plug, actually. I'm sorry. Because uh, I'm on the panel, of the, the judging panel. <laughs> I know, I know. But I, I, I wanted to push it. They're doing a wicked thing where they're trying to give 10, 10 grand away to, uh, like, an SME, like a business owner, like a, a tradesperson or something. I think they've had about 15,000 people apply uh, and there's a short list of like 16 and I'm going to get to, I mean, not just me, solely me, but I get to help choose someone. There's a panel of judges. I was trying to get Cal's dad to like, he's a plumber. Oh, to, yeah, inside yeah. info. In, inside yeah. the trading, but. Yeah. Uh, Maybe you shouldn't say that. No, he didn't apply. Okay. <laughs> it was kind of a joke. And I thought, well, you know what I said it though? Cal's dad's had his van broken into in the last year three times. Yeah. Three times on the same spot on his on his driveway, killer. Tools robbed every time. It is a massive problem. It is a huge, huge problem. problem. So I think there's I think there's going to be loads of trans people out there who have been affected by it, whether it be like COVID or whether it be um, tool theft. But we've tried to do a load of stuff with tool theft through, with Simply Business. Do you remember when we did um, the tool theft thing with Simply Business, and then Boris called an election? Yeah. So we got I think we got like <laughs> between thirty and forty thousand signatures uh, of a petition. So it's going to get talked about in Parliament. We was going to do it. We was 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 hitting the numbers, and uh, yeah, he uh, he ruined it for everyone, didn't he? So we were trying to get it. So to get things, is it a hundred thousand to debate in Parliament? Can anyone know? It is a yeah. hundred thousand, right? To so, to get it debated in Parliament, you have to get to a hundred thousand. Is it just signatures? They call it, yeah. So yeah. Like an email address, basically, and then it will get debated. And then most of the time, they just say no. And it gets moved on, and you have to go for like another round of it, don't you, to get it like I think you have to then get like X amount after that. We've been doing it for what, like about a week, two weeks, and we'd hit we'd hit the, the forty thousand. Yeah. And then Boris called the snap election, and then who knew that when elections get called, all public what do you call what do what do you even call them? Petitions. Petitions, sorry. All public petition petitions get Paused, canned. done. No, they got canned. Oh, they don't even get paused. No, they don't. You couldn't even carry on after because it, if it goes over a certain time period, which it would have, uh, it was like six months or something, then they all just get canned anyway. So there was nothing we could do about it. Shafted. Yeah. Um, Imagine if we got it to to Parliament. We would have. We, How we, got, could, we, that would we have been? actually got a, um, some information back at ten thousand. They said um, no. Basically, we're not going to debate it. Nothing's going to change. And we're like, right, we'll show you. So we carried on, didn't we? Kind of, kind of brings me on to something else that I wanted to uh, talk about. I want to, um, and you don't know anything about. In fact, no one knows anything about this. Uh, I want us to get um, media on the national curriculum. Do you know that media, media studies, right? So you know, like the whole like um, social dilemma thing that's come out. Yeah. And like you know, it was all right. I remember. I think I spoke to Dan about it. Where's Dan? Dan. Oh, is he? <laughs> oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Um, 
he's shown someone in, uh, around the office for an interview. Um, the social dilemma was like, it was good. I, is it bad that I haven't seen that? Not really. I, um, I was like kind of, I was a bit bored, but I watched it because I was like, I want to, you know, I saw it's quite one like sided. And... Yeah, so I got it, and all, and all the points in it were valid, but there was no like, um, and this is what Dan said, there was no conclusion of like next steps. It's just like, this is really bad. It's basically blaming social media for um, everything, addictiveness to to advertising uh, but my thing is like that's not a new thing like social media is the medium of how people do it but do you remember like do you remember phone hacking and you... Sorry, yeah, yeah no we're live can... but you can like you you, it's fine <laughs> <laughs> that's why we wanted to that's do it, why we wanted to do it live office. oh she's gone really red laura come here a minute laura we've seen you run across laura, that way first. laura laura come here Come on, come on. You don't want you don't want to do it. You sure? Okay. I was just going to say, come and introduce yourself. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, you have gone really red. Don't worry. There's only about three people watching. You sound. Um, so it's funny because it's true. Yeah, it's funny because it's true. So it was, it was basically blaming everything on that. And my vision and, and view on it is that, like, do you remember like newspapers and like fake news and phone hacking yeah. and like all this shit that was like really really bad. Um, that was still like, it, was, it comes down to attention. So yeah. there's more people using it. But then, and it was all about like the, 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 like, and rightly so, like the impact it has on people's mental health and how much people use it and the addictiveness of it. I, I, I do agree that social media is more addictive than what like a newspaper was or radio. I don't think they were necessarily addictive, but the power they had was still the same. But there's no outcome. There was no like, yeah. this is what needs to happen. Right. I was talking to a teacher last night, I know, who, who, in her school, right, and this is in the whole of a, a big secondary school, she's the only person who's qualified to teach media, right, and they cover things like mental health and how, how children should be using it, like where they can. But they don't cover it, right, at all. So, like, think, but the curriculum still says that you have to learn Shakespeare because that's actually, like, really, as part of, like, English lit, Oh, well, Shakespeare, you've got to learn that because that's like, if you don't have that, yeah, you're going to struggle in life. You're going to struggle in life. Yeah. And I kind of, it's, it's like, it, it pissed me off. And, and I've been thinking about it all night. You remember when like Jamie Oliver changed the chicken nuggets in the schools and that? Yeah. Turkey Twizzlers. It didn't, got it, them it didn't, work, it didn't work out from there, did it? Because they brought them back now. Which is the yeah, but he did for a period of time. <laughs> He did, yeah. He had a big yeah. positive impact on like health. It was a great thing he was doing, but people just don't like being told what to do. How they? can, how can the curriculum, right? All this talk about how children are using social media, um, the usage of it, how to use it right, and actually, even you ask, you said this to me. What did you talk about, Dylan? You got a lad, yeah. Yeah. How old's Dylan? Ten. And what did he say to that he wanted to do? What are you buying for his for Christmas? He wants to be a YouTuber. Right. He wanted to be a footballer or a YouTuber, and the older he got, the more he realised that he was crap at football. <laughs> um, so then he was like, right, YouTube's the thing now. I want to become a YouTuber. Um, now, I, I'm like, first admit, not everyone can become a YouTuber, yeah? Because you've got to, like, if you want to be front of camera, you've got to have the, the personality or the confidence, all that. But, but look at our business, yeah? And then look at loads of other businesses and the, the brands we work with. Like, media, whether it be... Uh, producing, videography, editing, whether it be personality led in front of the camera, um, whether it be the usage of it, so social media teams, marketing teams, all of that, technology, coding into media, like it all like, sends the same thing. You don't study at school, you don't even have a choice to. When you get to, when you finish year 11, you can go and study media. Yeah. It's not and they'll do elements career, of it in like, it? she does it as part of her English, she's an English lit, an English language teacher. She does it as a part of that. How is that? How is that right? Maybe we should. Uh, we should. Do this is what it. I'm saying. Like, I honestly think we should. Have, we should. I know this is a big task. Like, yeah. But I genuinely believe we should try and get it put onto the curriculum. I, I want. It, I want a YouTube uh, school. Wouldn't that be great? We spoke yeah. about it. So yeah. uh, one of the big things we want to do. Sign them and take a ten percent management. <laughs> no, 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 because it's not about. Um, it's not about the talent side of it. Because the talent side, the talent pool for it is going to be smaller than like the broader part of it. Yeah. My thing is, yeah. is that 
if schools are trying to get ready, people like kids ready for the big wide world, if that's what their job is to do, how is, and I'm, I'm not, this sounds really shit as if I'm like shitting on Shakespeare and I'm not trying to do that. And I'm not saying that English lit and English language hasn't got a place because it has. But if they're trying to get kids ready for the big wide world, teaching them how to use social media and about media in general, is how is that not being done? They're letting kids down. I think we were fortunate enough that we were already adults when social media came out. So I think about my daughter, she's nine, and I let her use TikTok, but she's not allowed to, <laughs> I'm horrible really. She's not allowed to go on, she's allowed to go on the um, For You because it's who she follows. And she's allowed to follow a, a number of people who are her friends that I know she's following. And then she's allowed to make TikToks, but she's not allowed to post them. She's allowed to do them in her drafts. That's it. Yeah. And she's got a phone without a SIM card in it that was a hand-me-down because I don't want her having... So, like, I've quite, like, tried to sort of try and protect her from technology, but it scares the shit out of me that she's going to go into high school and never be able to, like, be unconnected. Yeah. You remember, like, if you had a problem at school, I mean, you probably didn't have problems because, you know... You I didn't just, go much. You didn't go much. <laughs> but, like, if, if you think about how kids connect now, if Ava comes home from school... She's got grief from people that she's at school with. It, don't, it doesn't stop, does it? Like, I, I, yeah, would be, yeah. I didn't have a, like, I had Snake. I used to be able to, like, I had a phone that I could change the, the front of it, like the, the colour of it. It was pretty high tech then, mate. No, it was, but I didn't get one until I was 15. Yeah. I know what you mean. I had credit still and, like. It is a worry. Um, and I think if the parents aren't teaching it <clears> then, and, and the schools aren't, then. They've got, you've got a problem there, surely the, Yeah, surely the, every, everyone is like, in the news, the social dilemma was a big, big thing, wasn't it, that everyone wanted to talk about? Young enough to come and talk about this. Who's, I don't know. Do you have social media when you was at school? Uh, yeah. What, what, what ones? Come on, come on, come here, come on, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, oh, Alice, woohoo! Look at us, she's straight in, no bother. The mic. On the Pick mic. up the mic, stand on the stand corner, on the, uh, stand on the spot, please. The arrow. There we go. Hi, Alice. Hello. How you doing? Uh, good. Uh, Alice, uh, state your name and your job title. And your, and your age. And your just age, for the yeah. purpose of this conversation. Hi, I'm Alice. I'm a videographer. And how old and are you? I'm 23. 23. 23. Okay, yeah. So when you were in <laughs> year, say you start high school, like year seven, did you have social media? I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure I'd started Facebook when I was in year seven. Yeah, I mean, you would have definitely used it at school then. Yeah. Um, and did you ever, like, um, you don't have to go into, like, I'm not really, like... So you, how was your childhood, Alice? But, <laughs> like, did you ever have, like, um, things at school where you were, like, I wish people could not contact me when I left, or, like... Do you know what I mean? Like, did you ever feel like um, the usage of social media was, like, too much when you were at high school? Oh, yeah, because if you fell out with someone, you'd get deleted, or... Yeah, was that a big thing? Tag you in a picture and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, what about being, what? just being like the, the notion, like being untagged from a photo? Yeah. Oh, but like it's a big, big thing. Like. You've got to be careful, I guess, with what you do post as well, because I should imagine it's like a year eight or year, year nine, you wouldn't be like tagging, like, you know, here's me and my nan on the beach, you know. Yeah, your mum on Facebook was the worst thing in the world. Was it really? In school, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I wish I could have my mum on Facebook, but uh, she's dead, so. Wow. I can't. <laughs> Is that how you're going to let Alice go? Is that, that, yeah, that's the end of this segment. Thanks, Alice. Thanks, Alice. Thanks. Bye. Um, wow. Yeah. Well done, Alice. Yeah, yeah, well done, Alice. Nice. <laughs> you shit. <laughs> My po yeah, dead moms flew straight in, didn't they? You didn't, yeah. Um, uh, but I, I genuinely believe something should be done, and I think we should do it. Okay. What does everyone else think? Is everyone else that Any comments? Anyone like saying anything? Be good if people like, you're going to come back, are you, Jamie? Nope. Oh, he no, he's, sorry, he's on his way back. You've got to yeah. be quicker than this, mate. Come on. Am I on, people? Am I on? Yes. So Sam Fowler actually used to nag his mum to give him a camcorder to make films at home. So um, cool. I look at the equipment now and I know that I would have been a YouTuber as a kid. And what, like, a great YouTuber he would have been as well. Oh. I think he's still got it. Yeah, I think, I think he, he has as well. It. When I see him on the, on the goat vlogs, when I used to see him on the goat vlogs, yeah. He done one um, where it's pretty much just him. It was yeah. in a park, and it's brilliant. I was like, I could listen to him all day. She's got one of those voices, isn't it? Yeah. I quite like Sam. I'd want, uh, <laughs> I'd want Sam to read him a bedtime story. Yeah, I mean, I would, yeah. <laughs> no, you know who, who I'd want me to read me a bedtime story? 
There's a guy we know at uh, Simply Business called Michael Garvey, and he has got the most uh, beautiful... Another Simply Business plug. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, it's well, going to be sponsored do... by Simply it's Business. It's not sponsored by Simply Business, but they're doing some good moves. That's all I'm saying. But Michael Garvey's voice, I would let him read me a bit. He's got a voice like Morgan Freeman. You know, like you just want to go, okay, come on then, give me a cuddle. Yeah. Yeah, this got weird I've... quick, didn't it? Yeah, well, you I've got a question it. for you. Oh, so, uh, like Sam, do you think there should be some kind of, you know, fund or law or, like you said, some kind of media thing that comes to place that allows like kids, like maybe like a Sunday school, for kids to learn how to Sunday use school. I don't know, like some <laughs> kind of like after school activity that should allow kids to become YouTubers and 100%. media. 100%. We've science. been talking about something we want to do within the business that's going to, that's going to form like some form of like academy that people that kids can choose to join and get a qualification out of it and then some inroads into businesses. So it'd be like our job to make sure that we can link with other companies that are employing people in that scope. And then they've also got the choice. But I, I just think it's insane that we're letting kids grow up and moaning, like really, really moaning at mass. Like everyone in the world is moaning about social media, about Mark Zuckerberg and fucking TikTok and all this stuff and then being like, but the kids don't need to know how to use it. Why is it any, like, why is it any different to things like, they do like sex education because they don't want kids to get like a, a teen pregnancy and things like that. Why is it, why is it like, if, if it's so bad and it's going to damage kids so much and then they're like, are you, you know, it's not uh, something you have to take. You've got to take it. You've got to learn about Shakespeare because he's, you know. Yeah. Compared to something mainstream like football then, so football, every school, you know, in, in PE or after school classes and statistically you're more likely to become a YouTuber. And when I say YouTuber, to, be, to earn an income from YouTube rather than football. Like there's definitely more people who earn a living from YouTube than they do playing professional or semi-pro football, definitely. Yeah. Um, but yet there's so much emphasis on people playing football now I know why because it's physical and it's healthy but if you look at all the things that you need to become a YouTuber understanding you know finances and stuff like that as well there's a lot of benefits on that side as well I think yeah it's more we broad, definitely need it? to start a YouTube school now I, I academy I want me to oh shit on it be good. sorry you're um, right there. sorry Emily <laughs> you scared the fucking life out of me then I won't expect you I've seen it in your hand as well um I, I want to do I don't know how we work this out but I want to do it I'm looking at Jamie. I'm, I need you as well. You need to be involved in this. Jamie's like not, not, another, not another one of your wild ideas. This is important. <laughs> yeah. Not, I'm, well, we're going to do it. And, and actually, anyone who wants to get involved and help, like, we need yeah. teachers on board as well. We need people who are actually in the curriculum to push it. I don't even know where you'd start with that. Where'd you start? If there is anyone who's listening or watching. Who, anyone who's listening who thinks this is a good idea and can help, please get in touch. That'd be great. Um, um, Finally, this brings us on. Oh, sorry. Oh no, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you. I just referenced the, you know, one of your silly ideas. Another one of Lee's ideas. <gasps> but this brings us on nicely to um, talking about some of the probably the the worst, some of the best, and some of the worst business ideas that we've had. And the yeah. one that I want to highlight is this is how this is probably the best one that you've done. I believe um, that didn't work, but. <laughs> you wanted to charge people to walk, essentially. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And Lee's business was called Walk the Nordic Way. Look, in my defense, Explain. I think I was having a midlife, I think I was having a breakdown or like some kind of midlife crisis. But essentially, yeah, it, it, it was to. It's so embarrassing, isn't it? This is. I. I um, at the time, um, I was married, and I think, I think how it went was that the person, like someone she knew at work, had like done this course, uh, and he was this like good-looking guy, and, he, and 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 like he started talking about it, and and everyone was getting really hyped up about the fact that he was doing this thing. So like I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I could be like him. I could be like him, and and uh, looking, I want to. Uh, I can walk. I can walk. I can do what you can do, prick. Um, and then. So I went and like in investigated it and researched it, and I basically moved. I went down to London for a weekend and stayed at my granddad's, and I paid someone to teach me, and a few other people, and we walked around Richmond Park, um, 
with what were called like Nordic walking you paid sticks. to teach you how to walk. Yeah, but you, you do, like the, the, the notion was, are you still going to be able to see me if I stand up? So it was like you have to, <laughs> you, you had your poles, yeah. That's so embarrassing. I know, and then what you would do is, it was like meant to be like a full body workout. So you would, you would step forward with your right, right foot and then with your left arm push back and then extend with the pole. Yeah, and then keep doing that. <laughs> no, oh, no. Stop it. So, um, we were doing that as a group around Richmond Park. Um, I, I felt a bit silly, I suppose, yeah. at the time. I bet, I bet, I bet you did look really cool, like that really good-looking guy there. Yeah, yeah. And then, then I came back and and I like researched my field that I was going to do it on, like some kind of weird farmer. And then uh, I bought all the gear. I like these poles were like about 150 quid. And then I had to buy some like walking boots. All these gear. I probably spent about four, five hundred quid on all this stuff. I had a logo design, which I think, did you, did I get a copy of that to you? I had like an artist do a logo for me. Walk the Nordic Way. And it was a man like Lincoln walking Lincoln. on a hill and it said, walk the Nordic Way over the top of it. And I was like, yeah, this is it. And then, then I just realized it was a, a, like a mental idea. Um, it's one of the worst I've heard. And stopped it. Yeah. Did you get, actually get out with anyone? No, nah, yeah, nah. it's kind of like one of those ideas, that, and you spent all that money and then gone. You know what I used to do as well. Think it work. No wonder, like my marriage didn't work. But I, I, uh, I used to go out of an evening and like practice, practice. walking, <laughs> just going out for a walk. Uh, yeah, it was a really bad one. We, you've had some shockers, I, I, but we'll save them. Shockers, yeah. We'll save but them. I, I like it. Just the title, "Walk the Nordic Way." It almost sounds like something like. Alan Partridge would say or do. <laughs> yeah, it's really, yeah, it is when you do it like anyone, that. Uh, I'd like to know out uh, of the, the, the two people that are probably listening or watching to this, have you ever had like a business idea that's worse than that? Well, I can't, I can't, I would love to make this into a segment. So if anyone's got bad business ideas they've had, whether they've like half worked or just horrifically failed, um, we want to, you know, just make light of entrepreneurship. It's fucking hard. Like, yeah. The only reason we've ended up getting to this point is because we've just, what I would say is that this business wouldn't exist if I hadn't gone and done the walk the Nordic way. That's true. It, it, it could be true. Yeah. Could be true. Yeah. That's why I like to tell myself. Yeah. We should see if, we can, if there's any way of reviving it. No, I don't want to do it. Just for a funny video. Yeah. I probably, I, you know, my dad has probably got the poles in his garage still. Incredible. Um, I think that's about time, guys. We, we, uh, you know, we don't want to make it go over forty-five minutes. No, that's fine. Um, and we will do a, we'll probably do a podcast on our failed businesses. Yes, there's a lot of people that don't know the things that we've done. But please, anyone who's going to watch this afterwards, or um, this will be built up into um, audio podcast as well, audio format, and be distributed across Spotify, uh, Apple, and uh, some other associated ones with Anchor. When is that going out, Jamie? Tomorrow morning, Tomorrow morning that'll be distributed. So if you do listen to that. Please leave a review. I think everyone does this in podcasts, don't they? Because it, it's even so if you like even it. if it's shit, like the live shit, this is shit. But just leave a review. Give us some feedback. We're all about feedback. Yeah. Um, and we'll be here live next week. Hopefully, Ad won't have the shits. Um, we won't have a birthday cake. Um, <laughs> you won't mention your deceased mother um, yeah. uh, during the podcast. Three things you got to avoid: the shits. And I'm not going to say the third one, dead moms and other things. Other things. Yeah. Um, uh, um, I've been Lee Wilcox. Um, this has been... Adam Barry. Uh, and this has been the Drunken Brainwave. Pedophiles, that was the third one. <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> got, got there you, in the can't, end. you can't do it. Three things you can't mention. On yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Fuck. Oh, Ad. Um, that's not for LinkedIn, is it? That's definitely Facebook. Um, um, so uh, you can't cut that though it has to stay in that's awful that is uh, what a way to end um thank you very much for watching like i say please subscribe wherever you can we are on every channel possible through social youtube channel launches today uh, just lean ad um uh, and like i say please subscribe to the podcast and leave reviews where you can we will see you next week thank you very much uh, as one final element what we'd like to do is get rich krilly oh can you just come and pick up the mic please rich krilly you just come, come around here. Quick, quick, run round, quick, run round. Lee, Lee's about to show you um, the best way of sacking someone. Oh, wow. <laughs> Imagine. Uh, stand on the spot and pick up the mic, That's please. The pull your, the uh, back, pull back, your bandana back. down. There, look, you can. The arrow. Black arrow, look. There you go. There we go.
Um, just want you to close the podcast off, so you just have to say bye or whatever you want to do, really. But we're looking at a camera. Yeah, if you well, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Have a <laughs> lovely day and a lovely week and a lovely month and a lovely year. <laughs> bye, bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.